Test, test, test. Okay, we've got a couple of people here. Can uh, could you indicate in the chat box if you can hear me, please? Please indicate in the chat box. Okay, Dr. Thompson says yes. Anybody else hear me? Can anybody else hear me? Dr. Danforth says yes. Okay. Jack says yes. All right. <clears throat> okay, I want to welcome you here for this. You're probably going to hear a few things that you didn't know about today. Hopefully, that's what these are for. So you can educate yourself and your patients and uh, get a lot better results and realize where a lot of patient issues are coming from that you didn't really realize that they were coming from. Okay, so let's kind of get right in there. Okay, now it's on synthetic vitamins. This is a rather long document, but uh, a lot of it I'm going to allude to and leave uh, for you to read for yourself <clears throat> just so you understand that Where's the chat? There it is. I don't know why sometimes you can put it over there, sometimes you can't. That is really weird. Okay. Nonetheless, maybe someday I'll figure that out. Okay, synthetic vitamins. <clears throat> Okay, we should be concerned about taking synthetic vitamins and other unnatural nutrients because published uh, research in the last few years concludes a couple of important things. First, synthetic and other unnatural nutrients are mostly ineffective in preventing disease. Not totally, but mostly. Secondly, these chemicals may be dangerous to your health. Some have been shown to increase the risk of death. Most of the studies show an increased incidence of cancer, heart disease, and the reason for the increased risk. So even some of these innocuous uh, supplements that we think that we're taking, uh, we don't really realize that they're synthetic. And that's, that's really a big thing, I think. This research should not be confused with health-promoting roles of natural versions of these nutrients found in natural foods. Decades of research, thousands of studies demonstrate the effectiveness of these natural food nutrients in successfully preventing and treating disease. In the case of uh, vitamin C and E, the most common synthetic compounds used in dietary supplements are the vitamins themselves. In fact, almost all vitamins on store shelves and those used to fortify foods, even natural foods, are synthetic. Most of us don't realize that so we see natural on there and we presume hey not synthetic but 
Oh, just hold on just a minute. That's not necessarily so. One common exception is vitamin E, which is found in supplements as either synthetic or natural, but so-called natural vitamin E is actually quite unnatural. <clears throat> synthetic vitamin E products are used in cheaper supplements as D-L-alpha-tocopherol. Um, <clears throat> basically, if you see the D-L there, it's synthetic. If you see D, not so much. If you have any words after the tocopherol, it's synthetic. If you have anything other than O-L, on the end, like I E I I L E L Y L, anything like that, it's synthetic. Okay. So basically, uh, ideally, you should have D alpha mixed tocopherols. D alpha or D mixed tocopherols with no words after it, and then you're on pretty good ground you have natural vitamin E, okay? Uh, the alpha tocopherol is the most active, so that's what they allude to most, but basically a lot of the antioxidant properties are in the mixed tocopherols. And you have a lot of other things that go with, the, with it, which we have discussed in previous classes, so you might want to go back and review those. However, even though this vitamin E is a natural form, it's very unnatural for two reasons. First, it is in isolated form. So you don't isolate something natural. It comes with all the associated factors. Okay. <clears throat> we talked about, uh, for example, vitamin C and vitamin K and uh, some other associated minerals with it. In nature, alpha tocopherol exists with seven other vitamin E compounds. Three tocopherols, three, four tocotrienols. And so you see some that have added tocotrienols. Well, they're naturally with it to help it work in its natural form. And selenium is with it to work in its natural form. So here we have vitamin K, tocotrienols, selenium, mixed tocopherols with no words after that tocopherol to and then you're on very good ground that is it is natural second supplements of alpha tocopherol are usually very high unnatural doses so when you see these high doses then that can cause issues okay we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit later Normally, consuming a full day's worth of high vitamin E rich foods would yield about 30 to 40 international units of alpha tocopherol. Yet, typical dose in supplements is 10 times that, about 400, okay? Sometimes a lot more. And you might want to take that in higher doses for a very, very short period of time. I'm not totally averse to mega doses. For a short period of time, but a long period of time, I'm definitely against megadoses because it uh, always causes imbalances when you're doing that, even in the so-called natural forms, because you're creating an imbalance, okay? Almost all vitamin C in dietary supplements is synthetic. As such, it's listed on the label as ascorbic acid. The dose also helps identify it as synthetic. It's almost impossible to get much more than 100 to 150 milligrams of C from food into a tablet or a capsule. The amount of C in a natural supplement, therefore, may be listed in the supplement facts panel as vitamin C, 100 milligrams, will not list ascorbic acid or any of the many types of synthetic vitamin C. Now, interestingly enough here, a new study on vitamin C new 2008, which it's relatively new, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition showed that adults taking the synthetic version had serious side effects. Doses of 1,000 milligrams of C a day impaired their energy systems, significantly hampering their endurance capacity, specifically by weakening the mitochondria of the cell, which burns fat and sugar. 
It also had significant adverse effects on the antioxidant system. A key immune regulator whose those who take vitamin C often take this amount or more. It's almost always synthetic. Children may be even more vulnerable. Now, on the vitamin C and E, we talked about this uh, in a book called The Reverse Effect. Uh, in a couple of other Thursday night classes, and <clears throat> basically what it said is sometimes things like C and E could act as pro-oxidants instead of antioxidants, especially when taken in large doses. And I immediately connected with that because I noticed when I had uh, severely immune compromised people, specifically people with MS, for example, as well as a few others, I noticed anytime I gave them C or E, they got worse. And it wasn't just the detox, they stayed worse. Okay? And so when I read that in that book, The Reverse Effect, it immediately connected with me. I'm going, huh, maybe this stuff is not what I'm being told it is. Okay? Two types of dietary supplements. Now, here's something that was introduced by somebody just a few years ago. High-dose synthetic isolated dietary supplements. Well, you've heard of NSAIDs for painkillers over-the-counter. Well, these are HSAIDs, okay? Make up 98% of the products available to consumers. You don't get high doses from natural supplements. You just don't, okay? So when they're doing this, they're extracting stuff out or they're adding synthetics in. So even when you think you're getting uh, natural stuff, you see any type of high dose at all, it's not. It's synthetic, or it's got a lot of synthetics mixed in with it, okay? The unnatural supplements are one of two categories, dietary supplements, the other being truly natural, okay? Now, truly natural dietary supplements are made from freeze-dried real food or otherwise not heated, and the nutrients they contain are natural doses without added synthetics. For example, fish oil containing EPA, DHA, flax oil, alpha linolenic uh, acid, alpha linoleic acid, vegetable or fruit concentrates, for example. Unfortunately, most fruit and vegetable concentrates used in dietary supplements are dried with very high heat. So you got to be really up on that in destroying various nutrients. They don't supply much nutrient, but are uh, are used in the supplement to make it appear natural, while all the nutrients listed on the label come from synthetic or other unnatural additions. And you put that word additions on there. Because the natural ones just aren't in high amounts. And uh, vitamins naturally do not come in high amounts. And I come under a lot of fire of this, especially on vitamin C, because, hey, Guinea pigs and humans, you know, don't manufacture their own vitamin C. But guess what? We're alive. We lasted through all these millennia without large amounts coming from just the food that we eat. My position is we don't need that much. That's why we don't manufacture it. And it's been shown, as we've discussed before, that to get out of scurvy, all you need is a teaspoon of fresh orange juice. will bring you out of scurvy. It doesn't take that much. We just don't need that much. What we need is the proper form, okay? And we talked about how if your system is too acidic, it converts your natural vitamin C, which we'll call ascorbic acid, into mostly dehydroscorbic acid because the, of the too much acids in our system, and our body still acts like we are vitamin C deficient, or ascorbic acid deficient. So our call is to eat a highly alkaline diet. So therefore our body will have ascorbic acid and not be converting. So if our systems are highly acidic, 
and we take all these supplements of ascorbic acid, the body just keeps shoving it over there and turning it into dehydroscorbic acid, and we're still acting like we're vitamin C deficient. So the call is first to correct the acid alkaline balance, which affects a whole host of other things, okay? We've covered in previous classes, okay? So basically, we have whole food supplements spiked with synthetic vitamins just to appear like they have a whole lot of stuff in it, okay? Now, basically, some companies claim their products are made from real food with real vitamins, when in fact they feed synthetic vitamins to yeast, harvest the yeast to use in the supplements. So the yeast have eaten the synthetics, they're loaded with synthetics, now they can claim that they're natural, but they're actually still high in synthetics. USDA has not addressed this yet, okay, and the FDA has not either. Almost all the B vitamins on the market are synthetic, so the dose is not a good indicator. And we're going to give you lists toward the end of this of names on labels that show whether it's synthetic or natural. So if we kind of skip over this, you're going to have a whole you're going to have whole lists of it at the end which you can prop up you can hand out to patients so they can read the labels just as well okay <clears throat> okay if if you read the label don't find these active names for the B vitamins they're most likely synthetic and some synthetic vitamins may convert to their active forms in the body, but they require additional nutrients. So, I'm not totally against all synthetics because they can be converted possibly in the system if they have the right things there to do it. But they can't do it in super huge doses, okay? And for example, in order for the body to use synthetic folic acid, you need vitamin C and vitamin B12, sometimes niacin, to do that also, which we've covered in previous classes. Vitamin A, for example, most commonly used synthetic form is vitamin A palmitate. Okay? Those listing vitamin A without noting uh, beta carotene are probably synthetic unless some type of fish liver oil is listed somewhere on the label. Vitamin D comes in two natural forms. D2 is called ergocalciferol, which is from plants. Vitamin D3, colocalciferol, is from animal sources. Of course, we get it from sun, sunlight. And we've known for about 100 years that all you need uh, to get adequate vitamin D in your system is uh, 15 minutes of direct sunlight to the palms of your hand and your face in uh, basically the summer, through the spring, through the autumn, in the winter, you need maybe five or ten minutes more. So you need a little bit more from that indirect sunlight, but not a whole lot more. <clears throat> All minerals are natural. They come from the sun, early formation of the earth, etc., etc. But uh, we put them in our body in, in a way that's not natural. How's the natural way? How they're taken up in plants. Then animals eat the plants, we get them in the animals, etc., etc., okay? Uh, but we synthetically uh, attach different things to them, and then it's not as good for us. <clears throat> okay. Natural, anybody can use the word natural almost as good as a... Uh, can if, if it's naturally in the blood, probably many of you didn't know. Let's see in the topic box here. Did you know that aspartame naturally occurs in the blood? Did you know that aspartame naturally occurs in the blood? Let's see in the box here. Dr. Thompson, no. Dr. Donaldson, no. Family, no. Okay, most everybody doesn't know that. The only reason I know that is I've read biochemistry textbooks from 
cover to cover, and I noticed that in there, and I'm going, wow, I didn't know that. So xanthine oxidase, which is bad in large doses from homogenized milk, it's naturally in the blood, but just not in those huge amounts, okay? Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we're going to kind of skip through down here. CNN reports vitamin E causes cancer. This, in fact, is the synthetic form. Because people are taking these large amount of this synthetic form, it gets into the cell structure. For short periods of time, it can act like natural E, but then it gets in the machinery, it starts clogging it up, and it starts causing problems. Cancer is one of these. Now, you're going to be kind of probably taken aback at a lot of this stuff that I'm going to show you from this part forward, because when we start showing you uh, what's fortified in food is synthetic. What's, what we're taking mostly as supplements is synthetic. And so all of these effects that I'm going to be showing you here are the effects of taking basically high amounts of synthetic vitamins. Okay. Here's vitamin A. So... Side effects, hives, difficulty breathing, swelling of the face, lips, tongue, or throat, fever, sweating, unusual tiredness, mood changes, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, changes in menstrual periods, confusion, feeling irritable, double vision, bleeding gums, mouth pain, seizures, hair loss, peeling skin. I give an example. For example, I had a doctor who's taking my part four course or was considering it up in New England, he said, I, I see you are doing stuff on hair loss. And I said, yep, we're going to give you about four or five things on that. So she comes and we're going over this and she notes because vitamin A is like the first thing I go over in that class. Hair loss is one of it. She had thick hair and she's like losing it by the handfuls. And she's been taking a single capsule of vitamin A per day. Just single capsule. She thought, that can't be what's doing it. She called me three weeks after the class. She immediately stopped taking the capsule a day. Her hair stopped falling out a week later, okay, and it started growing in again. It started growing in thick three weeks later to where her hairstylist even sees it. Says, what are you doing? She just stopped taking the vitamin A. That was it. Okay, and I had another lady call in about her baby having colic, and normally how you take care of colic is just put the baby in front of a window to get sunshine 15 minutes a day, direct sunlight. That wasn't doing it. The mother, because she read that taking vitamin A helps with the immune system of the baby, she was taking it while she was breastfeeding the baby. She quit taking it because she saw the side effects. Four days later, the colic stopped. Okay? Now, all this was vitamin A palmitate. Okay? Peeling skin, cracked skin around your mouth, skin discoloration. High vitamin A may, may increase, increase the risk of osteoporosis, especially in older adults and postmenopausal women. May cause growth problems in a child, severe drowsiness, loss of consciousness, vision problems, fever, chills, cough with mucus, chest pain, trouble breathing, vomiting, diarrhea, peeling skin, head, severe headaches, uh, skin uh, peeling on the lips and palms, bone or joint pain, dry mouth, fever, feeling of discomfort, illness, weakness, headache, increased sensitivity of skin to sunlight. Frequency of urination, especially at night or in amount of urine. Irritability, loss of appetite, loss of hair, stomach pain, unusual tiredness, vomiting. Yellow patches on soles of feet, palms, hands, skin around nose and lips. Fatigue, malaise, lethargy, abdominal discomfort, anorexia, vomiting. Hard, tender, cortical thinning over the radius and tibia. 
Migratory arthralgia, slow growth, premature closure of epiphysis leading to rested bone growth in children. Central nervous system, irritability, headache, increased intracranial pressure manifested by bulging fontanelles. This is from breastfeeding babies, folks, while you're taking vitamin A. Papilledema, exophthalmos. So some things that you would uh, look at for thyroid problems. It's taking vitamin A. Dermatologic fissures of the lips, drying, cracking the skin, alopecia. Alopecia, yeah. Scaling, massive disqua, disquamation, increased pigmentation, hypomenorrhea, hypos, uh, hepatosplenomegaly, hepatotoxicity, jaundice, leukopenia. This is retinol palmitate, retinol palmitate. Virtually all the homogenized milk that children have drank for decades fortified with vitamin A palmitate. Okay. Of all people, Chuck Schumer have called attention to this. Wow. And I thought he was totally evil. I still do. But here's a good thing that he did. been shown to accelerate cancer in animals. Okay. I got to I got to ask you. Look at this. Stuttgart disease, cone rod dysto, dys, dystrophy, best disease, retinal diseases. <laughs> Mutation, gene mutations. Wow, look at all this. This is from taking Excess vitamin A. How many of you knew that? How many of you knew even a very partial bit of what I just went over? Let's see it in the box over here. <clears throat> Come on, I need some interaction in here. Dr. Danforth knew a little bit of it. Okay, some not all. Some lot not at all. Okay, th this is why I get people coming in. And they're taking all these supplements. And they come in and they're so sick. One of the first things I tell them to do is I say, stop all the supplements. Stop all of the supplements right now. Because I want to see what's coming out of those supplements. And I'm telling you, a lot of the times, 90% or better of the symptoms they, they're coming in with are from these supplements they're taking, thinking that they're doing better. And, you know, uh, by taking it, they were told to take it by their chiropractor or their nutritionist or whoever, okay? And they are just totally shocked. They've been putting out all this money, scads and scads of money, to stuff that is now making them sicker, okay? And unfortunately, the healthcare provider that told them to do it isn't aware of it. It's the very same thing that helps them at the start, overdoses them, and causes a different problem later. That's all I get, want to get you to recognize here, okay? I want you to become very, very cognizant of this. <clears throat> okay, vitamin E. Could be disrupting your endocrine system. Vitamin E. CNN reporting it causes cancer in the synthetic, it's in fact the synthetic form. Because the natural form, it doesn't come in that. It comes in the seeds. I tell people, start eating the peel, start eating the seeds of the fruits and vegetables. You're probably going to be getting plenty of the vitamins, the minerals, the fiber, the trace minerals that your body needs. But what do we do? We think peels are gross. We think seeds are gross, so we spit them out. I just tell people, hey, start eating that stuff. You already bought it. Instead of throwing that out and buying these expensive supplements, just start eating what you're buying, okay? And most of them just start getting so much better, they can't believe it just doing that. I didn't know that. I was always told it was bad and it was evil. If you eat a watermelon seed, a watermelon is going to start growing out of your stomach, out of your mouth, right? Yeah, that's what we were told. 
and all these other things are gross. I can't tell you how many people, when they started just doing these simple things, their whole health picker, picture changed around just by having them eat the peels and the seeds. And pretty much just stopping all the supplementation, at least after a while. I use supplements to help people catch up, and then I pull them back off of it. Unless they're missing a gland or an organ, okay? Then we got to make a little bit of an exception with that. <clears throat> but what we have to be always conscious of is are we, are we creating an imbalance? Are we creating an overdose, okay? So we're going to kind of skim over that. Now let's talk about Flintstones. This misspelled in here. I'm sorry, I forgot to type that in. Contain the following substances. Aspartame, cupric oxide, synthetic vitamin forms, coal tar artificial coloring agents, blue and red and yellow dyes, zinc oxide, hydrogenated oils, GMO cornstarch, Centrum, another leading multivitamin. Centrum contains synthetic petrochemically divided Derive vitamins that are capable of causing birth defect. This is a, this is a really big sellers. Both of these are okay. This is what you have to start showing. Pull this out, print it out, show it to your patients. Okay, they need to know this stuff. They're going to be totally shocked. I use, I basically tell patients, uh, look, if I can send you to a health food store to get something, it's cheaper. I'll do that. But if I don't think you can get the quality that you need. I'm going to insist that you buy it from me because I know the quality is better. And I start explaining these sorts of things to them, okay? Then they're just totally, like, stupefied. They didn't know this stuff. They figured that the FDA and the USDA and the FCC basically had everything over this and they're making sure everything is just right. And I'm going, uh, not really, okay? Vitamin D. It's a pro-hormone. It's not actually a vitamin. Your body makes it. It's a pro-hormone. And it predates a whole lot of things in here. Okay? So we have vitamin D2, ergocalciferol from plants, D3, colocalciferol. It's essential for good health. Only about 10% of the D our body needs is obtained from food. Uh, from food. We get it from sunshine. Of course, do we go out in sunshine anymore? You need to do that. All you need is 15 minutes a day direct sunlight in the depth of winter, maybe 20 or 25 minutes. Just to the palm, palms of the hands and the face. That's it. If you expose more, you need even less exposure. Okay? So, fortified milk or juice. They have D2 because it's cheaper to produce. But guess what? You... You get uh, pathological calcification of your organs when you get too much of this stuff. And there was so much of it being fortified in foods in the 1980s uh, that it was causing problems. And pe they were warning people, you know, don't buy this stuff. It, you know, all of this stuff that's fortified with D, you're getting too much of it. Then they started realizing it was the D2, which has a much magnified effect relative to D3. You can not even used to get D3 in supplements. Now you can. Uh, I looked around, I first found out about this in the mid-1980s. I only found one supplement, D3. I had my patients order it. Then that company quit making it because nobody was buying it. Nobody knew about it. And then... As they started seeing all these complications, there's thousands of studies on D2 causing path pathological calcification of organs. They slowly started taking it out of things and stole, slowly started putting D3 in because of that. And the attorneys would have a heyday with this, uh, but it's probably past where they could uh, sue anybody about it, perhaps. Anyway, D2 can be made synth synthetically by irradiating fungus, plant matter, naturally contain ergocalciferol, okay? Basically with that, it's, it's an overdose thing, okay? Yeah, these things make it, you get it out of it, but 
uh, it's naturally made from uh, from uh, the ultraviolet light. So I, I'm not going to linger on that too much. It's just the type and how much of this type, D2 versus D3, that you're getting. It really is the issue. But even D3, um, you know, we presume that when we take it in with the calcium, it helps us absorb the calcium. But is that true? No, we've gone over in previous Thursday night seminars, that isn't true at all. Basically, whenever you have any type of lipid in the gut with a metal, which calcium, magnesium, copper, iron, zinc, for example, are all metals in the periodic charts, uh, so any of the fat-soluble vitamins, any lipids put in there, it uh, saponifies. It's made into soap, and neither one is absorbed well. That vitamin D, is that even in the right form that makes it absorb the calcium? That's what we presume. That's what the patient presumes. No, it isn't. Look at this. Here is a form chart right here. Okay, you take the vitamin D in. So cholesterol, so you got sunlight, or you just ingest it, for example. Well, it's got to go through the liver and then through the kidneys to even get it into the active form to absorb that calcium. So just because that vitamin D is with the calcium doesn't mean at all that it's helping it absorb it. Matter of fact, it's hindering the absorption because it's the pontifying and it's making sure that the calcium is not even being absorbed. It's going through the gut and going out. So you're wasting your money when you're taking supplements like this. Okay, side effects, too much uh, vitamin D. Cough, difficulty swallowing, dizziness, uh, tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, hives, itching, puffiness, swelling the eyelids around the eyes, face, lips, or tongue, skin rash, Tightness in the chest, unusual tiredness or weakness. Um, okay, the hypercalcemia, hypercalciuria, pruritus, urticaria, hives, angioedema, regular edemia, nausea, and vomiting. How many of you knew all this stuff came from taking too much vitamin D? Let's see it over in the box over there. Too much vitamin D can cause that stuff. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't take a lot to take too much vitamin D. Come on, let's see a little bit of interaction in this box over here. How many of you knew all those things could come from taking too much vitamin D? Dr. Donaldson, not at all. Some, Dr. Payton, Dr. Danforth, yes. <clears throat> This is some of the reasons why when patients come in and they're taking this stuff, I immediately recognize these symptoms. I say, what are you taking? They tell me, let's take you off of it. Let's see what happens. Most of them clear up. They're going, you, you can't tell me that was coming out of those supplements I was taking to make me better. I'm going, that's exactly what I'm saying. And I show them this evidence. So what I want you to do is take this stuff and I'm putting in this seminar, take it, you know, you can ask for me to send this to you, which I will, and show it to the patients. They don't know this. Most doctors, most nutritionists have no idea about the stuff that I'm showing you, okay? It, it you know, just wipes out their intelligence. They, they got no clue. They got no clue at all, okay? Vitamin E. Too much. Even with... 400 units a day or more. Remember, you only need like 30 or 40 units of vitamin E a day, plus the associated factors. Blurred vision, diarrhea, dizziness, headache, nausea, stomach cramps, unusual tiredness or weakness, abdominal pain, hematoma, urinary tract infection. You add joint pains to that. We talked about that in another seminar. How many of you knew all those were associated with taking too much vitamin E, which can usually just be a single capsule of vitamin E a day. Dr. Donaldson, no. Dr. Thompson, no. <clears throat> Dr. Payton, no. Now, I just want you to realize and become a... Uh, 
familiar with this stuff by going over it and over it and over it. One, one of the things that I have an advantage in is I teach this stuff all the time. So every time I teach it, I relearn it. So it becomes more and more a part of my memory, okay? If you think I can get it once and remember it, you're totally wrong. I, I'm very slow on the uptake, but with repetition, it becomes better and better. But I just want you to start realizing when that patient walks in and they have these things, ask what kind of supplements are you taking, okay? Then you look at it, you realize, you go, okay, let's take out that supplement. Just like these two people that were taking the vitamin A. Hair falling out, baby with colic. One capsule was all it took. Just a single capsule. Okay? Just a single capsule. Vitamin K. Dimenidiol, high doses of phyto phytonidione in newborns. Decreased appetite, decreased movement or activity, decrease in breathing, enlarged liver, general body swelling, irritability, muscle stiffness, paleness, yellow eyes or skin, difficulty in swallowing, faster irregular breathing, lightheadedness or fainting, shortness of breath, skin rash, hives or itching, swelling of eyelids, face or lips, tightness in chest, trouble breathing and or wheezing, Blue color, flushing, redness of skin, dizziness, fast or weak heartbeat, increased sweating, low blood pressure, <clears throat> uh, redness, pain, swelling, and this is injection, skin lesions, unusual taste, inflammation, atrophy, necrosis, venous irritation, phlebitis, pain, swelling, tenderness, an injection site when you have injection. Hypotension or cyanosis, facial flushing, tachycardia. <clears throat> Sometimes you can have anaphylaxis. Dyspnea. Allergic sensitivity. So allergies may be hyped from taking vitamin K supplements, for, for gosh sakes. Gastrointestinal, peculiar sensations of taste. Dyspnea. Death, death from vitamin K? I, yeah, I was told vitamin K. Well, we all need extra vitamin K. Death? Wow. Erythematous indurated pruritic plaques. Profuse sweating. Scleroderma-like lesions. Scleroderma? Are you kidding me? Dizziness. Unusual taste. So, look, look at this. Your patients with dizziness, your older individuals, sweating, your younger people with sweating, maybe from the supplements they're taking, for gosh sakes, that have vitamin K in it. How many of you even thought of that? Let me see that in here. Let me see that in this box here. It's patients coming in with dizziness and sweating may be coming from simply taking a multivitamin with vitamin K in it. <clears throat> no, no. Everybody participate in this. I want you to really get this stuff. That's why I'm pointing out some of these very specific things. Okay? Okay. Dyskeusia, altered sense of taste, uh, which, you know, also is smell. So here's your older adults again taking vitamin K. Hyperbilirubinemia. So here's... Uh, you know, some blood tests, some urine tests, okay? Jaundice in newborns. So here's the mother taking the supplements, pregnancy vitamins causing this. Wow, okay. Hemolysis in newborns. Start thinking about this stuff, all right? I want you to be just as, as abhorred at this as I was when I was first researching this, you know, decades ago. And, you know, I, I have a master's degree in biology emphasizing human nutrition, and they were talking about taking this stuff for these things. They didn't tell us any of this stuff. I started realizing, I'm going, my gosh, the stuff I was giving people to help them out is causing so many problems later on. I'm not saying it doesn't help at the start. I'm just saying in a prolonged fashion. 
it can cause problems like this. That's what I want you to really get out of this. Okay? Okay, thiamine. <clears throat> Basically the only heat labile uh, B vitamin. Made from coal tar, ammonia, acetone, hydrochloric acid. Much less absorbable since it's not bound to phosphate. <clears throat> okay, benfothiamine. Another synthetic thiamine. So we're going to give you a couple names. You're going to see them all later, so you don't have to pay total attention to this. Okay. Coughing, difficulty in swallowing, hives, itching of skin, swelling of face, lips or eyelids, wheezing or difficulty in breathing, feeling of warmth. So people who are overheated, pruritus, urticaria, hives. Weakness, sweating, nausea, restlessness, tightness of the throat, angioneurotic edema, cyanosis. People with blue lips from taking thiamine supplements. Wow. Pulmonary edema, so trouble breathing. Hemorrhage into the gastrointestinal tract, so bleeding in the bowels. Anaphylaxis, collapse and death. All this from taking thiamine supplements. How many of you knew any of that? See over here in this box, how many of you knew those things? Or even just a piece of them? Good. This is a learning environment. This is what I want you to get. Okay? It's what I want you to realize so you can help these patients. And helping these patients may simply be to get them off the supplements they're taking. Maybe the best possible thing you could ever do for them. Okay? <clears throat> Riboflavin B2. Made with acetic acid, nitrogen, using genetically modified bacteria and fermentation. Shown to be less absorbable. And expelled in the urine like toxin should be, making the uh, the urine very, very yellow. Okay. Okay, side effects. Hives, difficulty breathing, swelling of the face, lips, tongue, or throat. Could have diarrhea, increased urination. How many knew that about riboflavin? And this again could just be from a multi a multivitamin supplement. Not necessarily taking a separate one. Okay? Dr. Donaldson didn't know that. How many of the rest of you knew that? Just these things about riboflavin. Come on, a little participation over here. Just Dr. Donaldson. There we go. Dr. Payton. No, didn't know that. Danforth. Great. Family. Wow. Okay, good. You're learning stuff. Good. Niacin. Okay, niacin, inositol hexanicotinate, causes less flushing of the skin than niacin does. Okay. Now, safety and side effects. <clears throat> okay, we knew about skin flushing, but dizziness, tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, itching, nausea, vomiting, Abdominal pain, diarrhea, gout, liver damage, diabetes, pruritus, skin rash, vomiting, darkening of the urine, light gray colored stools, loss of appetite, severe stomach pain, yellow eyes or skin, abdominal or stomach pain, cough, diarrhea, feeling of warmth, flushing redness of the skin, especially face and neck, headache, Nausea, vomiting, rash or itching, runny nose, sneezing, stuffy nose. So all the sinus issues here could be taken from taking niacin supplements or simply the niacin in a multivitamin. Yeah. Dizziness or faintness. So these older people that are taking the multivitamins may be causing the dizziness when they come in. Dryness of skin. So these people coming in with dry skin. Prolonged fever, frequent urination. So 
a lot of these people were in the uh, uh, the diapers, the adult diapers from taking niacin supplements. Are you kidding me? Wow. How many of you knew that? Let's see that in that box over there. All right, so the next patient that comes in complaining of frequent urination or leaky bladder, any of that stuff, first thing you ask them, are you taking supplements? Are you taking, yeah, I'm taking it. My MD told me to take to clean out my blood vessels. Okay. That's the big one right there. Well, you want to get out of your diapers? Yeah. Stop taking the niacin. I'm telling you, just just like that, nine-tenths of them, as soon as they st stop taking the niacin, they don't need the diapers anymore. Isn't that crazy? Wow. We already learned about coffee. Coffee is another one that causes that. Okay, so you got another deal. Joint pain. Muscle aching, cramping, side, lower back, stomach pain, swelling of the feet, lower legs, unusual thirst, tiredness, weakness, irregular heartbeat. Yeah, irregular heartbeat. Wow. Tachycardia, palpitations, atrial fibrillation, cardiac arrhythmias, syncope, hypotension, postural hypotension. So standing up and you get dizzy or raising from laying to sitting position. Uh, how many of you knew that post postural hypotension could be related to taking niacin supplements? Dr. Donaldson, no. Matt, no. Dr. Thompson, no. Good, good, you're learning stuff. What I want you, what I want you to do is to put these things up here and just reread them, reread them, Reread them, reread them. So when a patient comes in, presents with it, you go, wait a minute, I saw that in one of those Thursday things. You go over, you see it, you say, are you taking any supplements? Yes. Okay, which ones? Get off of it. Let's see what happens. Okay. <clears throat> Sweating, skin burning sensation, macular papular, papular rash, dry skin, skin discoloration. Diarrhea, peptic ulcers, eructation, flatulence, slight reduction in platelet counts. So look at this. Reduction in platelet counts. How many of you knew that on a blood test, reduction in platelet counts could be from taking niacin supplements? How many of you knew that? Let's see that over here. Family, no. Donaldson, no. Dr. Payton, no. <clears throat> Dr. Danforth, no. Good, we're learning stuff here. Anaphylaxis, angioedema, urticaria, flushing, dyspnea, tongue edema, so swelling of the tongue. They're having trouble breathing and talking even. Larynx edema. Face edema, peripheral edema, laryngismus, so all these things dealing with speaking. Trouble speaking can be coming from niacin supplements. How many of you knew that? How many of you knew that one? No, no, no. Come on, we need some more yeses or noes in here. Trouble with speaking coming from just taking niacin supplements. Ja hepatitis and jaundice. What? Hepatitis and jaundice from taking niacin supplements? How many of you knew that? Let's see that in there. Or even gout. Gouty arthritis. Look at this, gouty arthritis. No, didn't know. I bet none of you knew this stuff, okay? Yeah, you're inducing gouty arthritis by taking too much niacin. And we're told, give niacin to clean out the blood vessels and keep them on it. And now we're inducing things on them. I'm, I'm not against it for a short period of time. 
you know, don't think that. Long period of time, larger amounts. This is what we're talking about here, okay? Myalgia, myopathy. We as chiropractors, hey, we have to be really concerned about this stuff right here. Uh, just muscle pain and muscle aches and all this, and we're beating our head against the wall saying, what could that be? And do we, you know, did we ever even consider it was taking the niacin supplements or even a multivitamin mineral that has niacin in it? Here's dizziness syncope again. Migraines, anesthesia, paresthesia. How many of you knew that migraines and paresthesias could come from taking a simple niacin supplement? Let's see that over here. Family, no. Thompson, no. Peyton, no. Donaldson, no. Come on, we got some more in here. Let's interact here. Danforth, no. Ocular, blurred vision, macular edema, which could lead to macular degeneration? Are you kidding me? How many of you knew that blurred vision and macular problems could come from taking niacin supplements. No, 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 no. Good, and I'm stopping on these purposefully, not to skip over them, but just to make you go, oh my gosh, I'm giving that to this patient and they're having this problem after I gave it to them. I didn't tell them to take it for a short period of time and they kept taking it. I may be, be the one that caused it in them. Okay? This is what I want you to look at here. It's not just that they came to you taking it, but you may be act, they, the actual cause because you didn't realize this stuff. Okay? And maybe you were right to give it to them at the start, but you never pulled them off of it. Okay? And now they're overdosing. Now they're getting all these side effects. Insomnia, nervousness. Here we have older people, maybe even younger people now with insomnia from taking a supplement, for gosh sakes. Chills, edema, <clears throat> cough, dyspnea. Okay? I want you to get the weight of these things. Okay, panathenate. Here's a whole lot of things coming out of that. This, this is really difficult to uh, have a deficiency in panothenic acid. Pan means everywhere. It's in everything. I mean, you got to be totally a total junk food junkie and taking stuff that's totally keeping you from absorbing anything to be deficient in this particular thing, okay? But still yet, you could be. <clears throat> Synthetic panothenic acid. Involves uh, isobutyraldehyde and formaldehyde to form a calcium or sodium salt. Okay. It's bound with a phosphate. Side effects. Muscle pain, joint pain, diabetes mellitus, new onset. Sore throat, headache, weakness, lack of energy, dizziness. Uh, creatine phosphokinases increase. So here we have an increased CPK from taking panothenic acid. So there's a blood blood indicator here. Nausea, abdominal pain. Can cause diarrhea. <clears throat> Could cause a risk of bleeding. Gastrointestinal blockage, perhaps. Ulcerative colitis. Okay. Okay, pyridoxin, B6. Bunch of names right through here. Might cause brain and nerve problems. When you're taking a lot, may cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain, loss of appetite, headache, tingling, sleepiness. Seizures in newborns? Wow. Seizure, seizures in newborns. Browning skin. People are taking weight loss surgery here. 
browning of skin. So think of the people, and every one of you have seen them. It could be diabetic. You see it mostly in diabetics, but a lot of others. Right in the sock line above the foot, the skin browns. Could be from prolonged taking of vitamin B6. Okay, how many of you knew that? I'll see that in the box over here. Browning of the skin, like down around the ankle, from prolonged taking of vitamin B6. We have three no's in here. Let's see some more interaction in here. Not surprised, no, no, okay. Might increase the risk of cancer in people with diabetes and a recent stroke. Wow. Can increase the risk of cancer in diabetics and people who've had strokes. Large doses, clumsiness, numbness of hands or feet. Now I want you to think about it. Every, every one of you have patients who have clumsiness and have numb hands or feet. Okay? Now, we're familiar with B6 helping with paresthesias, but causing paresthesias with prolonged doses. Profound sensory loss might not be reversible. Sleepy or drowsy. Okay, so people are just not energetic. They're sleepy all the time. <clears throat> so that's with low B6, or I mean for taking B6 in supplements. They're taking a B6 supplement just to get them. They say, you know, I don't know why, but I'm sleepy. I'm tired all the time. Are you taking B6? Well, yeah. How long you been doing that? I don't know. A couple of years. How long you been sleepy? I don't know. A year, maybe two years. Get off the B6. Two weeks later, they're not sleepy all the time. Okay. How many of you knew about the sleepy or drowsiness from taking the B6 or even the numbness of hands or feet or clumsiness from prolonged taking of B6? No, 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 no. None of you knew about that. Good. That's, that's why we're giving this course. I want to give you new information you never had before. Okay. <clears throat> Biotin, upset stomach, diarrhea, fatty liver. We've talked about this one before, which basically you get rid of the fatty liver from taking too much biotin by giving them inositol, okay? But it can cause upset stomach and diarrhea. Okay, folic acid. Folic acid is the synthetic, folate is the natural, okay? Side effects, taking folic acid, prolonged fever, general weakness or discomfort, reddened skin, shortness of breath, skin rash or itching, tightness in chest, trouble breathing, wheezing, so a lot of respiratory type of things. Mild gastrointestinal upset, nausea, Abdominal distension. I was thinking how many of your people have the abdominal distension and bloating. And everybody's told to take the folic acid. Okay. Now you're going to look at them and go, are you taking something with folic acid in it? Okay. And just simply by taking them off of that, the prolonged fever goes away. The general weakness resolves. The respiratory issues go away by taking them off of supplements with folic acid in it. The wheezing stops. We thought it was asthma and everybody else thought it was asthma. It's from taking folic acid. Gastrointestinal. Mild upset. Nausea. Flatulence. Ooh, flatulence. Hmm. Flatulence. So, have people that are having a lot of gas and flatulence start looking at canned foods and boxed foods and supplements that have folic acid in it. You would be just totally floored. I've told people to do this. So, okay, you got a lot of gas you want to get rid of, right? Yeah, okay. I want you to start stop taking all the supplements that say folic acid in it 
I want you to start looking at labels and get off of every food, whether it's canned or boxed, that has folic acid in it. Flatulence almost utterly stops. How many of you knew that? How many of you knew that? See that in the box over there. No, no, no. That's a big one, folks. How many people have gas like that? A lot of people have it. Here's the abdominal distension again, too. It's the abdominal, abdominal distension and bloating. Bitter or bad taste. If you have altered taste buds, altered sleep patterns, they uh, having trouble sleeping, they wake up, they get up and down at night, they, they just can't keep it together. A lot of old people are doing this. Difficulty concentrating, overactivity, impaired judgment, increased incidence. Look at this is senility. This is dementia right here. You see that? Impaired judgment. You see that? Seizures and some epile seizures from folic acid? Are you kidding me? Wow. Erythema, skin rash, itching, general malaise, respiratory difficulty due to bronchospasm. Bronchospasm. Anaphylaxis from folic acid? Oh my gosh. Irritability, excitement, mental, mental depression. So depression from taking folic acid in foods that have folic acid and they're reacting to the folic acid. Confusion. You see these older adults that are confused. You know, have the, these people wandering out of their um, adult living places, wandering out in the snow and getting lost and all that. I'm telling you, it's, it could be from the folic acid in the food that they're eating or the supplements that they're taking. <clears throat> May accelerated age-related mental decline. Right there. Not thoroughly eating naturally folate rich, rich foods. Um, another study suggests people with high folate but low B12 levels may be up to 3.5 times likely, likelier to experience a loss of brain function. Wow. Wow. May increase insulin resistance, so slow brain development in children. So it, it affects brain activity in adults and children both. Look at this. One study, four and five year olds whose mothers supplemented with over a thousand micrograms of folic acid a day while pregnant scored lower on brain development tests than the children who took 400 to 1,000. Hmm. Link to high blood levels during pregnancy, a greater risk of insulin resistance. So, giving uh, pregnant women, lactating women, folic acid is inducing diabetes in the children. Slow brain development. Likelihood of cancer research. We've talked about folic acid and, and cancer, okay? It's really weird because before you have the cancer, it helps prevent cancer. After you have the cancer, uh, it helps propagate the cancer, okay? So, two real important things here. Okay, how many of you knew that folic acid, and look at all the things like orange juice that are full of fortified with folic acid, as well as are high in it, okay? And given those things to the lactating or pregnant women, are causing literally mental problems, probably in the one of themselves. I wonder how much of uh, the folic acid stuff uh, is causing uh, postpartum depression and stuff like that in the women because they're on these high folic acids and maybe they're not breastfeeding the child. Now they're, it's building up in their system and now it's causing them to have postpartum type issues, okay? So, how many, how many of you knew that folic acid could cause all this stuff? I thought it was only good for you, for gosh sakes. How many of you knew all this stuff about folic acid? 
fun participating in here. How many of you knew all this stuff? No, no, no. Dr. Danforth, yes, that's good. Learned something, Dr. Payton, that's good. Not me, Dr. Donaldson. Okay. <clears throat> okay, cabalamin. Now, cyanocobalamin is a synthetic form. That's not absolutely true. I'm just repeating some stuff that I pulled out of literature here. That's not absolutely true. Uh, but uh, usually it doesn't cause that much of an issue, even though that's in there like that. But methylcobalamin uh, may be better in here. But the cyanocobalamin can be converted into other usable forms like methylcobalamin and adeno, uh, adenosylcobalamin. Okay. Usually there's not a whole lot of issues with these. It's rather with uh, hydrochloric acid and um, the intrinsic factor uh, helping absorption and utilization of it. So, and we went over that in previous ones. If you missed that, I would go back and look at that again. And so here we're having... That's just going through different things about the synthetics in here. I'm just putting that in here. Now here's the mortality in randomized trials of antioxidant supplements. And a big thing here is treatment with beta carotene A and vitamin E may increase mortality. So when you're taking high amounts of this, you die earlier. Okay? And I'm, and I'm talking about on a prolonged basis. Okay, you got to be really cautious about giving this to people on a prolonged base. I'm not talking about short spurts here. Here's a comparison of natural and synthetic vitamin E. The results indicated natural vitamin E has roughly twice the availability of the synthetics. So this talks in, talking about the bioavailability here. Systematic information on the bioavailability, bioavailability and bioequivalence of vitamins, minerals, market product, products and on potential drug interactions is scarce. There's some stuff that's done on that, not a super amount. <clears throat> okay, fruits and vegetables. Most of the antioxidant activity of fruits and vegetables may come from phenolics and flavonoids in apples. So it's, it's the associated uh, actions of the associated uh, nutrients that help the primary part of it to work right. So you have all these things that work together. So here is a chart. Natural, synthetic. Okay, so we're looking at terms that are talking about synthetic versus natural when you're looking on a label here. And here's some more. If it's fish oils, natural, lemongrass, co-natural, acetate, synthetic, palmitate, synthetic, source not given, synthetic. So here's a whole list of stuff that you can print up. Here's a dissertation by Royal Lee on this whole topic out of his lectures. And at the end of it, uh, there's even the sources that he took them out of right here. Okay. Uh, such as the British Medi Medical Journal, 1944. So he took it out of some very good uh, areas in here, okay? Now, before we go on to the next topic, uh, how many of you learned a lot of stuff today about synthetics and how, uh, how to read them, to know that they're there, and how to know that in large amounts, I don't care what supplement it's on, if there's very large amounts at all, it's got a lot of synthetics in it, and all those adverse reactions that could occur, okay? It's good. A lot of you learned a lot of stuff. That's great. Okay, that's what we're here for. Okay. Now, before I move on, anybody have any questions whatsoever on any of the stuff that we just covered? <clears throat> Any questions at all? Does eating highly fortified cereal hurt? Yeah, just the, the cereal itself. Um, we talked about this before. Uh, 
just because, uh, this, the heating that makes the cereal makes the amino acids uh, unavailable. And then the milk and the sugar uh, makes the, the person eating it more diabetic prone. Okay. In the fortification, yes, can cause all this, yes. How can we print this out? Well, you just request it from me, okay? I think you can click a button there to, to do it, or you can actually, uh, you can send me an email, and I'll put my email on here, dr, oops, drbbrk at hotmail.com, and uh, I'll give you my phone number to call if you want, 469 nine nine five nine nine oh seven just feel free to call me I'm here to help you if you have a problem with the patient feel free to call me that's what I'm here for I want you to be super successful with your patients that's why I'm doing this okay I want your patients to get well I want you to flourish as a doctor as much as you want to flourish okay so don't hesitate to uh, call me with that Okay, now the next thing is, uh, we talk about evidence-based medicine and best practices, and we don't know what they are, and basically that's what this document is about. You should have a copy of this. Basically, it's, uh, it's the referenced uh, research papers plus your experience. That's what it is. That's what all this says here. This is from the ACA, American Chiropractic Association, and the British Medical Journal, right here, okay? So you need to have a copy of that so that if anybody asks you about it, if uh, probably you didn't even know what it was before I pulled this up. I pulled all of this right off the ACA website, okay? Now we have uh, videos of part one, two, and three are out. We're getting closer to part four. I thought it'd be out four now, but it's just so long. This is like over twice as long as any of the other ones. So that's coming with a whole lot of other issues relative to uh, uh, getting the editing done. But we're, we're on our way and we're, we're getting there. So I'm sorry it wasn't out before this. I finished... Uh, recording this about two, two and a half months ago, but we're getting closer and closer all the time. So shouldn't be that long, but the videos are out. You can get any of the part one, two or three videos. If you order in the next couple of days for the pre-publication price, 250, even though it's out and the post-publication is $500, you just, I'll still give it to you for 250 if you order in the next couple of days. Or you can go online. You can call me and order it, 469-995-9907. Or you can go online, ttapcenter.com. Go under Seminars Professional. Go to the seminar that you want. Under Requested Location, type in Film and your phone number. So if it's Part 1, you type in Film, your phone number. And click the down arrow by the 395 and choose 250. You can pay for it online or you can just call me and pay for it any way you want. Any of those first three, you can also pre-order part four because that's coming very soon. And you don't want to miss out on that, okay? Okay, TTAPS uh, Film 1, what the heck is all that about? Use of myotatic reflexes to resolve pain and biomechanics, chronic neuromusculoskeletal conditions. By the way, before I forget it, I'm doing a part one that's emphasizing acupuncture. You, if you're in Texas, you can get all eight of your required biennial acupuncture hours in what I'm teaching in Texas right now. I'm in Austin this weekend, and then Houston, then San Antonio, and then we'll be in uh, DFW, then El Paso, right in that area. We already did that in uh out in Lubbock, I uh, had some really good stuff come out of it. Uh, had uh, a female that was there um, attending. She had been uh, raped seven years earlier. Had all sorts of pelvic problems. Pride pressure to one acupuncture point, and 
it was all gone in seconds. She could not believe it. And a guy that was all bent over, couldn't lift his head up, had him standing straight, able to lift his head. He wasn't able to hardly turn his head or tilt side to side. Restored about all that just in a matter of minutes. Acupressure. We show you the few times to use uh, the needles. The rest of the time you don't really need to, and you can get results literally in seconds in most things. So eight hours of that, four hours, we're doing a quick rehash of some part one techniques to get very quick uh, reflex reactions in the body, and you got your four required board hours in there also. So if you need those hours this year, I would suggest that you take this because it's a little bit different slant because we're emphasizing acupuncture, but I'm going to show you, and most of you don't know, uh, I was the president of the National Institute of Clinical Acupuncture for 12 years. I studied in mainland China and their top three institutes, uh, number one, two, and three tr traditional Chinese medicine institutes, Beijing, Xi'an, and Shanghai, also the number one in uh, <clears throat> Hong Kong, the one in Japan and Tokyo, six other cultures. I'm well versed in all this. Uh, I'm not trying to get you to where you can pass a national board, although I did. Okay, out of 600 questions, I missed one. As far as I know, it's the highest ever scored on it. However, I I just want to show you the basics so that you can get right to it, figure out what to do, ask a couple of questions after you've heard the symptoms, go right to it. Get results like right now in seconds. That's that's what I try to do in every one of the seminars. This one I'm emphasizing acupuncture, okay, and acupressure techniques. So I would suggest that you take that. Uh, basically, in number one here, uh, we show you how to get off a cane or a walker normally in one or two visits or out of a wheelchair if they're not there because of paralysis. Uh, immediately restore a significant range of motion. Correct foot drop. Hog real rigidity, uh, arm or leg and stroke victims, improve hearing and tinnitus uh, very quickly, almost every time. Uh, fulfills the ACA evidence-based medicine best practices. So what are some of the things we show you how to take care of quickly? Fibromyalgia, sciatic, all, all these are provable with standard orthopedic neurologic exam. It's not just something, well, I think I did it. You use the stuff uh, that you would in normal proofs to do it, okay? Sciatica, uh, herniated or bulging discs, unoperated rotator cuff, frozen shoulder, regional pain syndrome, formerly RSD, burning tongue and mouth, burning pain in lower and upper extremities, genitals, female cyclical menstrual pain, vaginal prolapse, numb hands and feet, drop transverse cuboid arches, hyper and polyhydrosis, Cog wheel rigidity such as stroke, ALS, game bar A, seizures, Parkinson's symptoms, MS, bladder leakage, positive pinwheel, dizziness, vertigo, loss of vibration sense in the feet and toes, Renaud's, colder burning hands or feet, all the tunnel syndromes, um, cranial nerve symptoms, hearing loss of different frequencies. Quite, quite amazing. And you all know that I offer triple money back guarantee if you can't predominantly get everything I'm talking about here done at the seminar, just as well as seeing me do it. If, if I, I don't see that you're doing it, you deserve your money back for the time that you put in it, okay? I've never had anybody ask for the money back because, uh, frankly, I can demonstrate it. You can do it just as well as I can, okay? This is not esoteric. I show you the science behind it. It's not reflexology, AK, CRT, PNT, T, TBM, transverse friction massage, spinal reflex therapy, contract reflex analysis. It's all based on known tenets of acupuncture, trigger point therapy, reflexive neurology, found in laws and tenets in Dorland's Medical Dictionary, Chusage Neurophysiology, Guidance Textbook of Medical Physiology, and others, taught in all CCE accredited chiropractic colleges. Uh, verified by standard orthopedic neurological tests. I am published in JMPT, Chiropractic Economics, a techniques being taught. I'm a former, former adjunct faculty member, postgraduate division, Texas Chiropractic College. 
part two, scar tissue and rehabilitation. Now, first thing that we show you here is I'm going to show you how to, in the first four hours, how to easily, in 10 minutes, muscle test over 200 muscles, then lightly touch one muscle like this, and they all come strong, just like that. You go back and retest them, they're strong. The only exception being if there's severe atrophy in muscle, it's of course going to take a little longer. Second thing we teach you is how to palpate the whole body, lightly touch one spot on the person, just like that. You palpate, no pain anymore. Okay. The only exception being if there's a lot of uh, inflammation, even that pain will go down by half immediately, but it takes a while to settle down. And what does this do? It keeps you from having to go from muscle to muscle to correct muscle weaknesses as in applied kinesiology because you do it all at once. I've, I've, I've had seven applied kinesiology diplomates take this course. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe Goodhart couldn't come up with that. Well, we all build on each other's knowledge, right? I build off a of good heart. You guys are going to build off of what I give you. The second part Saves you from having to go from trigger point to trigger point, causing all that pain. Uh, it just speeds things up. So you, you get to see more patients, a lot shorter period of time. You get multi more referrals because you can do that. Okay, Folks, for several years, I averaged 640 new patient calls every month because of doing this stuff. You heard that right, 640 every month, not every year. Okay? It's just amazing stuff. Show you how to cut down the amount of time with the patient and get just uh, bizarrely good results, amazing results. So uh, the second thing that we teach is how to it's a rehabilitation, rehabilitate somebody in about a fourth of the time as it would normally take. And that is, you know, quite bizarre too, but it's demonstrable. Third thing, we show you how to, just in a few seconds, clear up scar tissue in somebody. And usually it only takes one visit. In ART, right in the seminar, Lee, he says it takes four to six visits to clear out a muscle with ART. And a lot of pain, and a lot of bruising with that patient. Graston, six to ten visits. You got to buy all the, those expensive tools and a lot of pain, a lot of bruising. Transverse friction massage, right in Syriac's manual, says 10 to 20 visits. A lot of pain, a lot of bruising. This takes seconds, very little effort on your part, very little pain comparatively to that patient, okay? So you can get that patient well a whole lot quicker. Guess what that does? It stimulates referrals, okay? You won't believe those referrals starting to come in. Some things that we do, and I'm going to, Put some of this in athletics, but the average patient. Hamstrings, ankles, wrists, golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, rotator cuff, knee, turf toe, shin splints, chondromalacia patella, weak ankles, trick knees, plantar fasciitis, myalgia parasthetica, bronchitis, asthma, gagging, esophageal spasm, reflux esophagitis, TMJ syndrome, migraines, chronic whiplash, chronic hip, knee, and ankle, shoulder, elbow, wrist pain, Tendonitis, bursitis, adhesive capsulitis, frozen shoulder, Dupuytren's contracture, trigger finger, Oshkut slaughters, chronic fever, sore throat, scar tissue, acupuncture, old fractures, chronic pain, bone sclerotone pain, fibromyalgia, burning pain, resistant sciatica, spondylolisthesis, spinal necessity of using a cane or walker uh, to walk from leg weakness, herniated disc bulge or protrusion. Uh, herniation, rotator cuff, frozen shoulder, foot drop, hearing loss of different frequencies, tinnitus, tunnel syndromes, small joint, fibrous ankylosis, chronic shingles pain, arthritic finger and toe joints, unadhere organs from each other and stimulate circulation lymphatic flow, diaphragmatic and accessory breathing muscle function. You're going to learn endonasial and, and eustachian tube techniques, about four of each of those. Female cyclical menstrual pain, vaginal prolapse, dizziness, vertigo, drop longitudinal transverse cuboid arches, unexplained chest pain, MS, Parkinson's, ALS, guillain barre ankylosing spondylitis type of symptoms, seizures, a lot more. A lot of stuff there.
And again, this is, a, you know, it's, it springboards off a lot of stuff, but it's not any technique that you've learned anywhere else, okay? Now, those first two, the first one takes care of reflexes only, basically, and minor amount of scar tissue in the skin. The second one, first four hours is a continuation of the first one. Then it's dense scar tissue outside the joints. Third one is dense scar tissue inside the joints. So what we are here primarily for is chiropractors. I've seen over 40,000 patients from all 50 states and 97 countries, over 3,000 university, collegiate, middle school, et cetera, athletes, over 800 of which were professional athletes, taking care of 12 professional athletic teams. As the first chiropractor invited uh, to treat athletes at the Run for Daylight Fast Man competition, okay? Now, so what are you learning here? How to very quickly and easily, with a lot less effort, ribs, costal cartilages, golfer and tennis elbow, chondromalacia patella, bunions, dementias, dementias by adjusting the knee. Wow, who ever heard of that? Yes. High arches, flat feet, drop transverse cuboid arches, so all the arches. Reliably relieve with an osseous adjustment. Reflex esophagitis, esophageal spasm, upper GI conditions, hiatal hernia. Yes, the true cause of hiatal hernia, you, you don't get to it by adjusting the stomach down, although that helps. It's actually, uh, you can correct it and keep it corrected by an osseous adjustment. It works very immediately. Acromion sternoclavicular issues, chondritis, costochondritis, hallux rigidus, hammer and claw toes, bow legs, knock knees, frozen shoulder adhesive capsulitis, rotator cuff, all the tunnel syndromes. Autistic children. I'm the only chiropractor in the state of Texas uh, to be on their recommended physician list because we take autistic children who are squeaking or not even speaking getting them to speak words. They speak words and then sentences and paragraphs and they get into school with normal kids. I've had two doctors tell me after treating children who had never talked before. First one said, five-year-old child, after I treated him, takes about three minutes, by the way. Very low force. Kid turned and said, thank you, doctor. He couldn't believe it. The parents were there. First three words the kid had ever spoken they started bawling another another doctor in the last two weeks said uh, child right after he did it spoke his first words also now autistic children autistic adults are angry all the time okay you will notice the anger immediately lets up because they become much more calm it changes their whole demeanor okay Stop Lucy migraines, hearing tinnitus problems, organ and gland dysfunctions, correct TMJ dysfunctions, and verbal techniques. Uh, we're going to show you how to take really big people you've never get, been able to get anything to move on to move very easily. Okay. Now, all three of those take care of nervous system issues. You're going to find that a lot of body chemistry issues that just haven't been clearing up no matter how much you change your diet or nutritional intervention uh, they just start clearing up by themselves because it's actually a nervous system issue because the nervous system controls the secretory and excretory events of the body so when you correct that those things clear up automatically if it's from the nervous system so a lot of those elusive, elusive problems are going to clear up automatically because of those parts one, two, and three. Now part four is pure body chemistry. Okay, pure body chemistry. And we get into almost anything you can imagine here. And here's a whole lot of things. People who are allergic to everything, we get them where they're not allergic. And uh, dysmenorrhea, is get their periods normal. They're not long and heavy anymore. Uh, how to correct osteopenia, osteoporosis, uh, get fractures to heal in a fracture, fraction of the time. Uh, infections, get them to clear up. People who are reinfected all the time. 
uh, hormone imbalances, seizures, ulcers, bleeding ulcers, constant bloody noses. How, how do you clear up candida, for example, in fungal conditions? Two or three weeks. Easy to do. You're going to learn that. Chronic fatigue. Super easy. Uh, psychometabolic issues, viscerosomatic syndromes. Uh, we teach you all about uh, bioavailability, lack of uh, digestion, ingestion, all this sort of thing. But, you know, where to figure out where it's coming from. Uh, how to get the glands and organs to react properly uh, using food. I'm, I'm not talking about really giving them stuff. I'm saying correct stuff in their diet and their organs start working right. And, uh, you know, it's an entirely different approach than what you're used to here. We show you things right out of the medical literature, how to get tumors to go away, how to get cancer to back off. It's in the medical literature. has been for decades. Uh, behavioral disorders, hyper and hypotension, depression, etc., etc. So all those are there. I would suggest, if you don't have these films, you need to get them. Uh, and be good to go to the seminars, too. You can't replace hands-on with films. You get a good start on it, though. Okay? Now we're going to go to the next topic. I'm also mentoring. I want you to have the best practice you ever imagined. Okay? I had uh, twice the largest practice in the Midwest, and I had the largest practice in the world for a long time. Uh, way past uh, David Singer's or anybody else's. Obviously, you don't have to have, a, you know, any type of great personality. You don't have to have charisma. I obviously don't. I trip over my words all the time. I talk monotone. Uh, you don't have to have any of that, okay? Uh, here's several testimonials. You can get these from me. Here's Dr. Larson. That's what he'd been searching for. He says, thing he liked, he'd taken several before. The others tried to get him to be their practices. He says, Dr. Bonebrake's different. He wants me to have the practice I want. He's not trying to make me into his practice. I just want you to tell me what your goals are, and let's, okay, let's go for it. Let's get you there, okay? I'm, gonna, I'm here in every way, both as a mentor or any of these seminars, to be a shortcut for you. That's all I'm here for, okay? I'm here to take all my experience, all my knowledge, and be a shortcut for you to get there, Okay? as quick as you want to get there. That's what I'm here for. This doctor is up in Minnesota. Here's one in California. Dr. Bonebrake's mentoring program, second to none. Best investment I've ever made. Uh, this doctor is in uh, Cleveland, Ohio area. Uh, Dr. Sansky was in Chicago, really improved his, and so much so he says, I want to move down to Florida. I've always wanted to, so is my wife. They picked up, built up the practice, and now we're helping them just start out with a boom in Florida. Okay? Dr. Mitchell down in Houston never thought he would need one. He, he saw what happened at the seminar. He said, wow, i got to learn this. Well pleased with it. Dr. Taylor in Fort Worth really helped him out. Dr. Meyer in Austin. Uh, Dr. Danforth out in Lubbock. Dr. Johnson, uh, down in Katy, Texas, I think. And I, I got several others. These are just a few of them. Uh, what they did was they said, I want to get somewhere. You know, I want that shortcut he's offering. And they're, they're taking advantage of it, and they're getting there. And that's what this mentoring program is about, for me to help you get where you want to go in as short of ordering as possible. Now, what are the mentoring programs, okay? Okay, the preeminence mentoring. It's a good fit for anybody. If you have a, I have people that started in multi-million dollar practices and they've, uh, like one of them in a year and a half, one and a half is profitability in a multi-million dollar practice. I've had people starting from nearly zero uh, quadruple their practice in a matter of three or four months. That's not unusual. But what I would tell you is just expect your practice to, uh, you know, maybe go up 50% in three or four months. 
And that, that'd be pretty good too, right? Okay, that would be very good also. How's it work? It enables you to become top level. Rapid, efficient patient response with scientific methodology found in medical literature. Become a nerve and biochemistry expert. You gain your expertise, you use it, you learn how to get quick results. Get referrals from everywhere. People are going to start, I'm, I'm sure they're pouring into your offices now, they're going to start coming from all over the country, all over the world, when you really get this stuff down. Get paid what you're worth, low stress, better family time, others committed, change their lives, your turn now. Now just close your eyes. Imagine the business of your dreams. What is it? Smooth running, plenty of highly satisfied, enthusiastic patients, as many as you want. Financial security, time to enjoy your family, time to exercise regularly, great health. What more could you ask for? Okay. Three reasons it works for you, because you will devote the effort, time, and dedication to get what you want. I can't do it for you. I can guide you there. Charisma, obviously, is not necessary. Group one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one mentoring is very affordable. Your next step, commit to be superlative. Go to the link, ttapcenter.com, choose the mentoring level that fits you, commit to change your lives. So, what are the different levels? 12-month group mentoring. One group call per week for 12 months, that's an hour each. $250 a month or one payment of $2,500, saves $500. That's actually gone up, but I'm leaving it there because I forgot to change it, okay? Okay. Um, so you have that one-on-one -on -one time. Basically, everybody participates. They click in there. They ask questions. I answer them. So you probably have a lot of the same problems that these other doctors are having. You learn from the answers I'm giving them. You chime in and say, hey, I, I'm having this problem. And I answer that, and they're going to learn from your problems also. Okay? You answer absolute anything. From how to handle your employees, how to hire employees, how to handle associates, how to... Uh, write contracts and employee associates, how to testify in court, how to write uh, uh, the, uh, at the end of the PI case, you have to, uh, you have to write a description of everything you did. Uh, I show you how to get triple, usually triple the amount that anybody else does when you're writing that case ending report. And you're, you're actually helping the attorney to argue their case. Uh, how to file insurance. I was, I was, I've been a peer reviewer for decades. I know how the insurance company works from the inside out. Okay. Now, out of that year, if you decide to step up in the first three months, the one on one, then you get the benefits of the one on one. Now, the next step is the six month one on one mentoring. That's a thousand a month. Or one payment of four thousand, so you save two thousand dollars. Save a third on it. You get anything you want. This is just you and me, one on one for six months. So twenty six calls of one hour each. Anything you want to talk about for your practice. In the first three months, if you step up to the one year one on one, you get the benefits of that. So the twelve month one on one. $1,000 a month or one payment of $8,000, which you save a third, save $4,000. Includes all four of those films for a year. Plus, we're going to put out a link when I'm done editing the films. We're going to make a link for each website. Uh, basically, I have thousands of testimonials of patients and doctors of things from part one, two, three, and four. And so the link will enable a patient to go on the link, click on something in alphabetical order, maybe about their condition, and see patients saying, oh, this doctor used T-taps in here, or the doctor saying, I used T-taps on this patient. These are the results I got on this. Okay. Now, it's more than just you saying, I took this wonderful seminar, and all these things happened. The patient goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they're seeing the patients and other doctors who did it and the results they're getting. They're going, wow. Now, when I put this on my site for each of those four, I got 20 new patients for each of those parts. That's 80. And I told my existing patients to go on it and look at it. 
they did. And they said, I didn't know you could help this stuff. I need to come in again. And average of 20 new patients per month per part re-upping. So in essence, 160 new patients per month off of putting this up. Now, even if you don't want the mentorship, which that's including for a year on the mentorship when it comes out, you can get it for 50 bucks a month per part. I just had a doctor ask, hey, are you doing the, the link yet? So if you've taken a part, you can get that on yours for $50 a month for that part. For uh, You can pay for it up front or you can just do $50 a month for it. Well worth it. You're going to get just a whole lot of people coming in just off of that. And we're going to have doctor blogs. So you get, as a part of uh, the 12 month one on one, you will be able to blog with other doctors that are on there. And so you get to interact and say, well, I have a patient with this. What would you do? Well, I did this, you know, from TTAPs, but I also did this outside of TTAPs. So you're going to get each other's experience, maybe with other techniques in here. And so you're going to multiply the effect of it on the doctor blog. So it's going to be $50 there for each part. And you're going to be able to learn a whole lot from that. Plus anything that you want to talk about, about your practice at all for an hour every week for 52 weeks. So you get all that in there. Okay. So basically what do you need to do next? You got to commit. Why wait? You know, the longer you take to commit, you know, this, this probably separates me a lot from a lot of people. Uh, I decide I want to do something. I just jump into it right then. I don't wait forever to do it. Okay. That's what you got to do. You just got to make up your mind. I want to do it. And you got to jump into it. Business results depend on effort and following directions. I can guide you all I want, but you're the one that has to do it. So you got to lose your excuses, take consistent action to improve if you do this, sign up. If not, don't. It's not going to work for you. I give you the information encouragement, encouragement, but you're the one that takes action, action to improve your life. Okay? Now, okay, so we have a question in here. Should we avoid most supplements when eating a wholesome diet? Yeah. Yeah, we got to learn what that wholesome diet is first, and that's part four, okay? We try to guide you into that. Can we use a pressure to help our patients with your acupuncture course? Yes. Yes, you can. Absolutely. Now, before we cut off for the night, we went over, I'm sorry, we went over about 15 minutes or so. Any questions at all on anything, mentoring, the videos, anything we talked about today, just... Put it in there. I'm here for the rest of the night as long as you want to go. Anybody has any questions whatsoever, just put it right in here and let's talk about it, okay? <clears throat> any questions whatsoever? Any questions whatsoever? Oops. Oh, and I cut that chat box out. I'm sorry. Okay, any questions whatsoever over here in the chat box? Okay, we have a thank you. I appreciate that, Dr. Danforth. Okay, we're going to give you about 10 seconds. Anybody have any questions, type it in there right now. Or else we're going to say good night. Five, four, three, two, one. Thanks for another great class. I appreciate that comment. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, thank you so much, and we will have another class for you in a week. And you all have a good week, and we will talk with you then. Thanks so much. Contact me at your leisure. I appreciate it.